How did you think practice went today on the field? I think all things considered, uh, I thought it was well. I really did. I thought uh, guys moved around, um, did some good things. Timing looked pretty good, so just felt good, good about uh, you know having to practice here. But uh, you know we did practice on the stadium turf. That field drains the best, so we just thought that would be good for us. Any consideration to going inside? There was. Uh, we talked about it. Um, Brian Porter and his people kept checking the uh, the radar just to, to see if there was a window, and uh, there was a window. We came in early this morning knowing that potentially we could have that time frame. Uh, we started everything an hour earlier. Uh, you know, got the guys here at 7 a.m., and we've been going since. What do you do in the rain, if anything, to kind of adjust? I know this is an important week for Greg Olson and the foot, but is there any sort of adjustment made, precaution, because the, the ground is so soggy? No. Um, you know, as I said, the, the biggest thing that we did today that was different was we practiced on the turf, on, on the game field, excuse me, because uh, that field does dra drain very well. Ron, I know we asked you a little bit about yesterday about the indoor facility, but your, your owner, I think, said that it was a competitive disadvantage not having one. And when you look around the league at how many teams have an indoor facility, how would you characterize what it is not having one? Well, I mean, for the most part, is you know, we, we've, we've, we haven't had one. And I really couldn't tell you. I mean, I, I, I just know that, you know, we do the best we can uh, and, and we just go out there and, and do what we can. Um, I imagine it would be great to have one, uh, mostly, you know, not, not just for bad weather, but for when it gets extremely hot. Um, you can go inside and take a little bit off the players as well. So um, I do look forward to getting one, though. I think that would be cool. I think it would be really helpful to us, uh, and we'll see, how it, we'll see how that goes as well. How did Greg look today, and are you op how optimistic are you that he plays Sunday? Well, he moved well, um, you know, and, and again, he uh, he didn't have any issues with uh, yesterday's practice this morning, so that's a good thing. Um, and you know, like I always tell you guys, it, it's really about the next day. That, that's probably the best indicator. Uh, he did a lot more today, um, and obviously, as you pointed out, Jordan is you know when that feels a little little tough out there because it is a little soft. Um, I think that put a little bit more stress on the foot too. So we'll see how it is tomorrow morning. The setback against the Jets when he came back last year. Of course, that was on turf. But how much and is it the same thing with like Eric Reed last week? Is it one of those things where you're just going to be really cautious about how much you play him? Well, we'll we'll try to we'll try to do the best we can with that. But you know, we sometimes can't help ourselves. You know, guys playing well or he's a big part of what we do. You want to get your best players out there, and you know, Greg is is who he is for us on the football field. So having him back would be great. Um, you know, and, and and we will definitely get a good feel for it tomorrow. Essentially, if you're getting him back on the field, you're gonna. It's going to be the Greg Olson you, you well, always had. Essentially, well, when he's playing, that's what we plan on having him. You know, uh, and I think it's, I think it's important that he, you know, he gets out there and, and does his thing. Ron, what was the pre-draft process like with Bradbury? Um, Anything stand out? And uh, did you go to Sanford at all? Or? Uh, we we actually sent Coach Wilkes and, and Brandon Bean went out to see them. I see him. They worked them out. Um, you know, we had the private workout with him. We brought him in. Uh, we interviewed him here. Uh, we watched a lot of tape on him. We, we really did. He was pretty much one of the guys we targeted. A lot of it had to do with his, his length. Um, you know, and probably some of the more impressive things is when they played against big schools, uh, he played well. And, uh, and it really showed. And, and, and that's, I think, one of the things that caught our eye is that he, it wasn't too big for him playing against bigger schools. Andre Smith's hamstring, was that the same hamstring that he dealt with in the preseason? Yes, yes, unfortunately it is. So, um, you know, hopefully we can get him back soon and get him back on the field. Um, it's just, it's unfortunate. Timeline-wise, when will you activate TD? Um, I believe we have to do it by tomorrow, I, I believe. And if that's, if that's the case, then, we'll, we'll, you know, whenever we're supposed to do it, it'll be done by then. Ron, I know you saw a lot. Uh, of Dante Jackson, it sounds like a lot of teams did a lot of homework on him in the pre-draft process. And I remember you mentioning those, uh, I think it was those, either it was three or five, five I don't remember what you said, uh, pass breakups against Auburn um, that really stuck out to you. But when you know him now as a person and a player, uh, what things have you noticed about him um, that maybe you weren't able to see because of the pre it's kind of limited in the pre-draft process in terms of personality? Um, I, I think we got a pretty good feel for who, for who he was, you know, again, from watching the tape, but also watching the way he played in specific games and, and the confidence in which he played with. That, that's probably one of the more impressive things. I mean, he really was impressive on tape. Uh, his quickness stood out. That was probably one of the more, more impressive things. But we see that out here on the field as well. I mean, 
and then his confidence in which he moves around and plays with that's that's also impressive so he, he's one of those guys that I, I think you, you know we, we got what we think we, we, we were getting um, now it's a matter of us coaching him up and, and helping him to grow and develop as a player I guess when I, I phrased that poorly but when you when you're scouting a player and you're kind of trying to determine which part of their personality or if if guys oh. are certain putting on a show or if they can right. back it up and how do you I don't think I don't think he ever. I really don't think there was anything like that with him. I really don't. I mean, you kind of what you saw was was what you were getting, and, and that I guess is the thing about it. Um, you know, he wasn't phony. You know, it's, some guys do come in and they are rehearsed. You know, their, their their agents have sat them down and they've kind of hey, you know, you got to answer like this and this is what you should say. Don't do that. Don't. He just came in and he was himself and he was impressive. He really was um, uh, enough so that that when we were sitting there in the second round. You know, we were we were getting pretty nervous, pretty anxious about it because we kept thinking, you know, somebody's got to be getting ready to jump and take him. And when our when we finally got to our pick, we were pretty excited about it because he was he was the one that was sitting there waiting for us. You celebrate all the guys you get, but what was the celebration after after getting knowing you guys could get him? Um, it was, I mean, it, it was it was it was pretty much you know when when you get a guy that you want, it really is because you know, you do hope to get certain guys certain guys do stand out when you when you interview them and go through the process and you really think that they'll fit you he's one of those guys you really just just like DJ we feel, we really felt DJ would fit us very nicely as well so you know getting those guys um, we, we thought was was a home run Talk at, at length about how the first thing you saw when you looked at the tape of DJ was yards after the catch this guy turns into a running back with Curtis was there one thing that sort of stood out the same way pretty much the same thing um, they're both built similar I mean they're they're thick uh, with the ball in their hands. They, they run physical. Um, they got good quickness, good bursts. I mean, we, we just we just felt, you know, two years ago with Dave Gettleman, at, you know, as, as, as the GM, you know, we really felt that he would be another one of those kind of guys that come in that's multifaceted. He's not just going to be a wide receiver. Or he's not going to just be a running back. He's going to be a guy that can come in and do a whole bunch of things for you. And we saw that with DJ. We, we thought DJ was more of a wide receiver. Um, and, and we really felt that um, you know we're going to get a guy that's got great uh, run after catch. Any idea what's going on with Demir Bird's ankle? And he seems like he's a guy that just can't catch a break. No, um, I know after practice it was pretty sore, and then today he came in and and, and really it was stiff. So uh, hopefully it just you know it's a short time and we can get him back out there.